him to throw with his good wind ups and he can fuck it. Take your seats, folks. I'm going to get the start for the Okay, we're all set. You going to bring for the rest of us? <laughs> for me and my employer. All right, I'm going to get started here. I'm just looking at that visa. Stop, stop, stop. I can't eat it. If you don't know, this is the dot triple X panel. That's what it is. Pros and cons of the triple X uh, domain. I want to uh, begin by saying that even though I take these things fairly lightly, this is a serious issue. And not to sound true, too melodramatic, I uh, think it's really important to respect what's being said and the people who are saying it. I, as a moderator, will not tolerate personal attacks or bad behavior. Okay, we're beyond that. I know I'm not being, being overly cautious, but this is a loaded issue. Um, before we start, I want to really give a sincere welcome to Vaughn, who has come here to talk to us and address concerns and answer questions. So please, everybody. I think it's something about that he's here, and we should respect him. Yeah, we may disagree, but I think that he's here and is being wonderful to be here. So I'll really say this compliment. So thanks again. Um, I'd like to start uh, by saying I did not volunteer for this. <laughs> I'm here against my will. Someone please call the police. Um, the collar will explode if I try and leave the room. Um, I'd like to start by going down the panel, having a brief introduction of everybody, and then I'd like to hear their positions on the issue, uh, possibly another round, and then I want to open up to questions. And questions, please be brief and please be specific. If you have questions for Vaughn, you are more than willing to ask them, but Please, you know, respect and let's make this professional and courteous and informative. Let's start at the end down there. I'm Jay Capita. Uh, <laughs> I'm Eric Bernstein, attorney in law versus attorney Eric M. Bernstein, which is why I've been introduced all weekend. <laughs> um, I am neutral on the issue for the purposes of the panel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Tom Himes. I, uh, I'm a senior editor at ABN and a board member of the Free Speech Coalition. I've uh, been in the industry since uh, 1999 and uh, been dealing with .XXX since about uh, 30 seconds after I got into the industry, literally. Quite amazing. Um, I have been um, uh, opposed to it um, for most of uh, that time for Various reasons, and uh, and still uh, maintain that uh, that uh, general position. Okay. Hi everybody, Vaughan Lining from uh, ICM Registry, Dr. Uh Connor, thank you for inviting me and having the opportunity to come and speak. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, for the kind words. And to be honest with you, I didn't expect anything other than fair treatment. The people that I've met in the industry have been nothing other than kind towards me since I've been involved. Um, I'm a vehement supporter of Dr. X, which may come as a surprise to some of you, but um, you know, looking forward to a good, robust conversation. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Connor Young. Um, I'm the uh, president of, of Why Not, Why Not Group. Um, we run this show. Um, I've uh, been involved with the Dr. X issue as well since, uh, gosh, about the same amount of time as, uh, as Tom over there. So it's something that I've been very passionate about. Um, I do have strong opinions on this. I'm uh, very opposed to Dutch Triple X for a, a whole number of reasons, and I'm sure we'll get into that and, and why I feel that way. Uh, and I'm just happy to have this opportunity to talk with you because I think this is such a real vital issue for our industry. This is a big one. Um, a lot of little things come and go in this industry that we have to deal with, and there might be a lot of drama over, over various issues that two years later mean nothing. Dot triple X is to me it's a game changer uh, and there's just a whole lot of information that I think everybody needs to know and to think about when deciding whether or not they're going to participate in, uh, in this new uh, top, top level domain name. So. Thank you very much. I would like to start once again at the um, 
at the end and just have a simple statement of why you feel pro or con around this issue. Um, so I'm very curious myself to hear what, what the different issues are and so forth. So please start. He's neutral. Uh, if you're neutral, please explain if you uh, if you would your feelings in the direction. <laughs> Well, you're not getting away with it. You want to, you want to answer that question at the end, Mr. Young? Well, I'm just going to give Eric an out really quickly here. We've asked Eric as, as an attorney to be um, on, the, uh, on the panel to talk about any copyright or um, trademark issues that might come up um, and his opinion on that. And I asked him, he does have opinions on .XXX, but I asked him to, uh, to focus more on the, the legal <laughs> questions rather than the, uh, the Tom, uh, Vaughn, and, and uh, myself are here sort of to give you the, uh, the opinions. I'm here for the amused. Can I say sustained and bang my gavel? Please. <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, first of all, the uh, ICANN has passed .XXX, so it is a reality now. I, I don't see there <clears throat> to be tremendously much benefit to uh, discuss, you know, the myriad reasons why uh, we think that it, uh, believe that it should not uh, be passed, if that's what we think, because it already has been passed. I think what's important for people um, in the industry to understand is um, what it might mean for them, whether they should engage with it, and uh, the potential dangers that uh, perhaps exist for them um, if, if they do. Um, I, I do believe it's uh, basically a money ground. Um, the various benefits that um, have been expressed uh, that, uh, that people say will accrue from the .XXX top level domain I think are basically um, smoke and mirrors. I think that <clears throat> some of them are absolute fantasy and I actually believe that when um, Stuart Wally, who's the CEO of ICM Registry, says that he looks forward to it being a, I think it was a force for good, I think that that's, I can't say how ludicrous I find that statement. And I think it's, I think that the statement is sort of like, you know, the dog whistle. Uh, you know, only certain people um, hear that. And the people who do hear that statement have a vested interest in, in believing it. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I think that we'll get in, into the, the, the details um, uh, of this. I'm somewhat mollified by the fact that ICANN will now roll out all of its GTLDs, though having been you know, involved with ICANN for many, many years now, um, I, I'm quite concerned that they do not plan that they uh, will be extremely resistant to uh, approving uh, GTLD strings that are similar to the adult one, and I think they're going to ha have to be pressed on that. Um, I do believe that Dot Triple X wants to have a monopoly on this, and that they will fight tooth and nail and spend however much money they need to to be the only adult uh, t uh, uh, TLD. Um, I absolutely do believe that, and I think that that is of concern. I am not and have never been opposed to the idea of adult TLDs, and, um, but it's, you know, the devil's in the details here. So that, I'll just stop right there and we'll continue on. Okay, and um, I guess from my perspective is we, we take it point by point. Um, I can give you my sales pitch and you can choose to believe it or not, as the case may be. Um, but ultimately, you know, some things that, that Tom's talking about, you know, I, I understand that there are questions that people want answers to. I'm more than happy to actually provide those answers to the best of my ability. Um, of course, I'm pro Dr. Pilates because I'm on the payroll. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like everybody else in the room. I, it's, it's a business, right? And most people are here because they do it to make money, not because it's a vocation or a calling. Um, so let's get the uh, let's get ready to rumble, as they say. <laughs> so uh, you know, of course it's a business, but the thing that's important for us all to remember is this particular business impacts all of us. So uh, you know, we launched. You know why not mail? Um, our clients come to us if they're interested in why not mail, um, and if they don't, why not mail does not affect their businesses in any way, shape, or form. Dot uh, Triple X is is not one of those businesses. It's a business that has the ability to affect everybody in this room, whether or whether or not they participate in it. In regards to participating in it, I'm just going to say this before we we move on. Uh, I think this is something everybody needs to think about. If you buy one of these domain names. 
because everything seems okay. Let's say you like the rules that are set up. You have, first of all, you have to understand this is a sponsored level domain name. It's not a generic like .com. There is a board uh, called I4, which is going to make decisions about how these domain names can and can't be used. Okay, I'm trying to keep this in a very general sense. The rules may be very lax at first. It may be that you look at it and they say, there's a few rules um, that you agree with. You say, hey, they're trying to do some responsible things. This is fine, I can live with this. I'm gonna buy these domain names and I'm gonna run with it. So you do. So you invest a lot of money in, these, in your website over the years. And the first year, everything's fine. You know, all the critics that were complaining and saying that this is a bad idea, nothing bad's happening, everything's fine. I spend a lot of money marketing. I stick uh, my domain name dot dot triple X on t-shirts. I go to trade shows. I take out ads, um, I do a whole bunch. I got a big source of, of traffic now, of people who know my .XXX domain name. Three years go by, four years, now your site's really valuable to you. Suddenly, uh, I4 <coughs> decides to make some changes. So they say, all right, these are the new rules. Now you have to do X, Y, or Z. We've put it through this process of the board. The board's decided that this is what they want for these domain names. Now you are in a position of either having to say, no, you know, I'm not for that. I give up my domain name, I lose all that traffic. One of your competitors might buy your domain name. Now they're gonna benefit from years of branding and marketing and everything that you spent. That's one position. The other position is being in the intolerable position of letting a board of people who may or may not, and I don't think they will, have your best interest in mind, making up decisions about how you can run and can't run your business. <coughs> Who would put themselves voluntarily in that position? That's what I don't understand. For what benefit? There are plenty of domain names. We've all seen what happens with um, when you buy a .NET or a .org. Uh, anybody will tell you, any consultant will tell you, get the .com. You gotta have the .com. You're gonna be losing traffic to the .com. There's no indication that there is any benefit whatsoever that's substantial by being on a .XXX domain name and in fact, now you're, the longer you're on it and the more you invest into it, the more you're potentially trapped. You know, and I know some, without naming names, I know some people involved with the organization uh, quite well, and I, I don't think that they all have your best interests in mind. So that's something that I think that would stop me personally from ever wanting to engage in uh, triple, triple X domain names. And any small benefit that you get, uh, you know, if uh, um, I4 is able to say, okay, we're, we've, we've set up this deal for you, that deal for you, to me, it would have to be monumental. It would have to be something so substantial to put myself in that position to where three, four years down the line, they have that kind of control over my business. So that's how I feel about it right now um, and why I think that everybody should be very, very, very careful <laughs> before getting into uh, buying and using these domain names. Thank you, Connor. I'd like to have Vaughn address that one, and then we'll ask your concerns to be expressed, and we'll go from there. Which which one? Please <laughs> <laughs> respond to that. No, because there's, there's a lot there, mm -hmm. and I think that um, Connor has got his own opinions, and he's entitled to them. Uh, we've got our opinions, and we're entitled to those also. And I think that, for me, the objective today was to, to sort of get through some of the, uh, the minutiae and, and get some good information into the hands of people you know, to, to understand what we're all about. So just on the I4 piece, I don't know if anybody's seen the recent announcement this last week about the uh, the, the people that are gonna be sitting on the I4 Policy Council. I do. And so if, if anybody's familiar with uh, the ACLU, for example, yeah. so the American Civil Liberties Union, and the former president of that organization is a lady called Nadine Strasser, who's actually Strassen. gonna be, Strassen, yeah. is gonna be sitting on the, uh, on the I-4 uh, Policy Council, and they are people that are obviously big advocates of free speech, so I think if anybody was in any doubts about our intentions and where we were gonna take this, then that's a fairly significant signal of, of where we're going. Um, in addition, there's the appointment of a guy, uh, Dr. Fred Kate, <coughs> and he's a, uh, a well-written guy. He's, uh, he's a professor at Indiana University and a big, uh, a big proponent of, uh, of privacy and security. And so uh, I, I guess the takeaway from that is that there's a lot of speculation about who's going to be involved in, in I4, their, their credibility and credentials. Um, we have not come all this way to be a AAA team. We're going to the major leagues and you know the, the appointments of the people that are on that board actually should send a signal to everybody that we actually mean business, you know. 
and we're in it for real, and we're going to do a good job with it. Um, any uh, thing to add or any questions to ask? Or say well, I, I'd just like to respond to that a little bit. Of course, Nadine Strawson, uh, people who are, know of the ACLU know of her. Uh, she uh, was the uh, executive director for about 18 years and retired, and uh, so they picked her. She's, of course, on the uh, it, on the um, uh, the policy council, which does not actually set policy, but makes recommendations. Um, I think that it is um, obviously an impressive appointment. I think that it is um, that it, it it's a far cry to say that uh, just because those people are appointed means that um, that uh, aspects of censorship with respect to dot triple X will not take place, or that just because they're there, or Robert Gordon Revere, who is obviously impressive in his own right and a supporter of the industry um, in many ways, um, means that uh, either the uh, uh, United States government or other governments will not attempt to censor this. It certainly does not mean that, company, that countries will not um, block .XXX. As we know, that several have already said that they will, and probably others will. That is, of course, something to take into consideration. Just for clarity, Tom, could you just tell the audience who said they're going to block the TLD? I believe India has said that. Um, no, uh, absolutely not. Well, okay. So no, but uh, let's, well, okay, let's, but let's, let's get ready to rumble well, and get it on. You okay, know? Let's, well, get some, <laughs> let's get some real information out well, there. One of the absolutely items. not true. <laughs> absolutely not true. Okay, well, I, I, I don't have the article in front of me, but an IT minister did say that they plan to, whether they uh, whether the government changes its mind on that. Uh, I've written a couple they of They haven't articles. actually made the mind up, Tom. If somebody misspoke, a okay. minister of the government who spoke, they weren't representative of the government's position, and it's wrong well, to they, twist they, that round okay. and, and give people the wrong impression in the room. Well, please, it, let's it, just okay. stick to the facts and get going with it. Okay, it, um, a, a member of the government and an IT minister did say that. Um, whether the government changes its mind on that, if they haven't people, made their mind up. Tom. Okay, then they haven't made their mind up. But it is uh, it is certainly a possibility that they could do that. It's certainly a possibility that Australia could do that, since they're entering into their own sort of filtering regime at the ISP level. And I do anticipate that, uh, that, a, that a significant number of uh, countries will do that. It has been one of our concerns all along. And I think it's a little bit disingenuous to say that that is, that that is certainly not a very distinct okay. possibility. It is just something for people in this room. Can we have a show of hands consider. how many people get billing traffic coming from India? People that run a pay sign? Well then it doesn't matter. Yeah, then it doesn't matter. Then then those come It comes down it comes down to money, Tom. Ultimately it's 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 commerce, it's down to money. If India block the domain and people don't ge generate revenue from Indian traffic, does it really matter? Well, not just uh, country, entire countries, but networks could block it. I, I look, it's people Go look. One of the aspects of Dot Triple X is to make it unavailable to children and to those people who want to do that. I just think that it is entirely, it is actually inevitable that networks, certain ISPs, countries are going to block this. How significant? They already blocked dot coms, dot net, yes. whatever. So yeah, they, they, you know, come on, let's just let's get real. Well, let's let's stop, let's, stop the fear and certainty and doubt, and let's just get. Let's, you know. let's talk about fear tactics now, okay? Because the fear tactics are rife out there. I have gone to any number of websites run by internet intellectual property attorneys, and they are posting up articles on their websites <coughs> right now. I mean, I looked at, and I, don't, I haven't brought them in because it doesn't matter to me. They're not targeting us, they're targeting the mainstream. And here's what they're saying. You, Pepsi, don't want to wake up one day and find that someone else has bought Pepsi.XXX. You better get on the ball for the sunrise period, and you better protect your brand. That is clearly a fear tactic. And so, you know, that's what's going on right now. That's not a fair and, tactic and, and at all, Tom. I, am, I don't, I don't, I'm not in the business of doing fear tactics. I think that it is simply disingenuous to think that it will not be blocked. It's something for this audience to consider as they consider it. 
So I don't really want people to be scared of that, but to not consider it in terms of your business is simply, I think, a little bit irresponsible. Okay, so that's all. And, and so from a point of view of um, Pepsi, Dr. Plex, if, if they want to register that domain, and not have any adult content on that Pepsi Doc Triple X. Is anybody in the room, you know, going to be too hurt about that? I might, just to be could try it. Yeah, you buy it and try it, okay? But ultimately, people go to Pepsi to buy Pepsi, not to look at tits and ass. You know, let's just get real about it. I, 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 I certainly expect them to do that and many other large brands to do that. I don't fault them for protecting, for protecting their brand. They're going to do that. Yeah. And, and they and have the budget to do it. And if I can say here regarding the summer, one of the frustrating things that I've expressed to ICM that I think the industry is now in is that I think we're facing kind of a choice. It's a leap of faith or you might just be cut out. So in other words, let's say... Um, ICM saying, hey, we're going to do all these great things, and over time, we're going to bring you all these benefits. To me, as a business owner, I, you know, I don't, I don't jump into things speculatively. It's like, okay, we'll, we'll prove it. You know, when you've done these things, you know, maybe I want to buy in at that particular point, years down the line when all these things have happened. But I don't want to jump into it on a blind leap of faith. And I think you're all in that position right now, unfortunately, because the policy is you either have to pay some money to have your domain name blocked for all eternity, you know, where you're saying, okay, I'm not going to use this. Am I wrong? Okay, okay. Uh, I was, was, was going to bring you some good news, Colin. You've changed this, okay. <laughs> so this is how I understood it. Maybe he'll tell us something different. You either have to pay money to block it to where you can't use it, or you register and you start using it on kind of a leap of faith, and now we're back to what I was saying before, you know, where you've got that problem of, I'm buying into this, what if all these good things don't happen? Uh, and now I'm now I'm bought into the system, and now I've got a domain name that maybe you know I put some effort into it, and we're all back to there again. So maybe he's about to tell us this, and I think it'll be great if he does. If we have some way of protecting our brands to where we don't have to buy in, we don't have to spend any money, we don't have to register Pepsi.xxx on some sort of protective thing and spend money, and we can wait three, four, five years and see if they deliver all the things that they say they're going to deliver, and then make a decision if we want to buy in or not. Uh, I think that would be great, but uh, last I spoke with you, unless something's changed, uh, that option wasn't there, is it? Uh, so, and, and, and in, in context of, of that, when we sat on the panel at, uh, at Phoenix, um, the question was asked if, if I uh, buy a blog for my name, so for example, if I do not want to partake in X, and I'm not talking about people from outside the adult industry, I'm talking about people from within, within the industry, and specifically that particular afternoon, Alison Vivas from Pink Visual said, if I buy Dr. Pol the Pink Visual Dr. Plex and block it, is there any way back? And the answer on that day was no, which sort of drew a bit of a, um, a, bit of a, you know, a sharp intake of breath from the crowd. Um, and we have listened to what people have said, contrary to, again, common, uh, common, common belief, is that, uh, that we have made a decision, Connor, to, uh, to allow people to buy the name, and, uh, and if they choose not to use it, that's fine. Um, but it's, it's, it means that it's not gone forever. They can actually start using it some way down the line when we've earned your trust and, and delivered some good things. So just as a, a, a footnote, and, and this was off an email this morning in terms of our intentions, and, and obviously what talk is cheap, and, and actions actually speak louder than words, right? Absolutely. So we, uh, we went over and we've met with the AITA in, in London, which is the Adult Industry Trade Association. And if you follow the board, you'll have seen, you know, people sort of jumping up and down because we were there last week, week before. But a guy turned up from, uh, from AtVod, which is, is video on demand, and it's basically, it's a tax on video on demand content in the UK. And, uh, and Stuart had written to the board of the AITA that as recently as this morning offering to fund the legal representations to actually try and get that overturned. So isn't that a good thing? It is. Is that a positive thing? <laughs> um, we have a statement from the end. No, I have a couple of questions from sure. all of that. I'm, I don't intend to be adversarial any more than lawyers have that nasty habit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the procedure that your company is going to take to prevent people from buying domain names that are not theirs. I own 
Yeah, EMBALaw.com. That, that's fine. I, I don't. I don't want a brand, nor do I want to have any part of EMBALaw.XXX. Right. What are you people going to do to prevent somebody from buying that domain name? Well, there's a, there's a, a fairly comprehensive Sunrise uh, program put in place, and going back in time, there was a lot of debate over you know sponsored TLD versus a generic TLD, and with a sponsored TLD, we're actually able to put some sort of rules and regulations in place. So the Sunrise program is like an, an orderly boarding process, much in the way that you have it on an aircraft. We're going to do it by row and seat number. So if you own a trademark on the domain, then you're going to get called to the gate first. If you own the, the name in another string, you're going to come second. And it's a bit like Southwest, you know? <laughs> the guy's got, <laughs> he's like row three, row 64, section C, you know? And that's how it's going to be done. And, uh, and it's well thought out. It's not been done with any other TLD whatsoever. We've put that together to actually uh, benefit the adult industry, protect the uh, and safeguard people's rights uh, straight out of the gate. If it was a GTLD, it would be fastest finger first. On the day that the domains go live and for sale, it really is the Klondike. Get digging and, and try and find your piece of gold. At least this way, it's been done in a very orderly and structured manner. So again, I'd ask the audience, is everybody okay with that? That if it's done in a fair and, and straightforward, structured can, manner, can I, or do you just want free for all? Can I get? Can I get the without pushing yourself to seeing how the audience is going to respond? What's the process you're going to use? Forget this audience. There's a process. I don't. I, I don't well, can, so, so, may, may, so, I, may I? May I? Carry on. Every once in a while, I do get the get the last word. Um, what's the process going to be for advising each and every? adult and non-adult company because you're not looking to prevent certain people. You're opening it up to everybody. It's a top level domain. It's open to everybody. It has it's supposed to have adult content. How are you going to advise each and every website owner for each and every dot com, dot org, dot gov, dot everything that dot triple X is out there with their name on it and they have the right to accept it or reject it? Well, it's, it's done in several ways. I can come and talk to you know, a, a room of people, uh, but that's not going to get too far too fast. Um, we can do press releases, we can put announcements in the newspapers, but typically the way that, that people are notified of what's happening is when they're registrar, so we're a registry, but a registrar is something like GoDaddy or Network Solutions, they actually contact their database of registrants people that actually buy the domains and say, hey look, Dog Triple X is about to launch, do you want to buy it or not? And what's the check to make sure that they have advised everyone, confirmed with everyone, and make sure that everyone's had that chance? And when is it going to happen? Well, I think it comes down to um, businesses if they want to, to sell the domains. I think we've got about 70 or so uh, registrars that are signed up and they'll do their own campaign and push out. I think that um, you know Tom and other members of the FSC have done a great job of making everybody in the adult industry aware of Dr. Polek. So if, you know, if anybody doesn't know about it, they've been living under a rock. <coughs> I'm, the reason I asked the question was I'm not talking about the industry. The industry probably knows better than most about dot triple X and are going to have to make their own decision. Okay. And Pepsi and Microsoft and everybody else, I'm talking about the millions and millions and millions and millions of website owners like myself who may have no idea what the industry is, like Jen, there are days I try, who have no idea that A, this domain is going to be available, and B, that they run the risk of finding, I'll use me, Somebody's going to run an adult website using a legal context to it without my permission or my understanding. Am I going to have to now go out? Is everybody going to have to go out and trademark their non adult domain names in order to be protected from people who are going to use the dot triple X as an attempt to use it against them? And also, I, I guess the fact that the sunrise period is, is finite, so you know, there's a, a window of opportunity for this that if, if lost is closed. Correct. So I would say to everybody in the room, if you are thinking about getting a triple X domain, then uh, go to www.about.triplex and, and there's a full breakdown and explanation of the sunrise period. I pick up the phone to your registrar if they haven't already picked up the phone to you. 
and uh, keep your eyes and ears op open on, uh, on the global press for announcements about the intellectual property sunrise process. Um, it's, it's not a surprise, we've been working on this for over a decade and, uh, and I think pretty much everybody's well aware, with, certainly within the industry, what's coming down the pike and we've also been working very diligently with our uh, PR people to get the message out to the intellectual property <coughs> constituency, uh, attending the meetings in I think San Francisco at the Inter meeting recently, um, you know, and getting it out in the trade journals. There are uh, registrars who specifically deal in brand and brand protection when it comes to domain names. So I think it's pretty well covered. We are getting a little close on time, so real quickly. There are ten, I'll use myself as an example. There are tens of thousands of law firms, fortunately or unfortunately, in the state of New Jersey. I doubt that 99.999% of them, all of whom have websites, have a clue that your people are out there with a totally new domain name that could be used by people against their own firms to talk about them because there is no prohibition nor an ability unless you're going to monitor content. If I wanted, somebody wants to go out and, dot, and buy, and I'll use me, dot, www.embalaw.xxx, buy it and use it. Who's going to monitor what's on it? Who's going to, oh, hang on a second. Who's going to make sure that it's not being used as a site to bash or comment about people? Or to defame, or you, or to downgrade the brand name of my law firm or any other firm, per se. I look. I'm not. This is not an issue of whether I'm in favor of this or not. I'm asking it a generic. I'm going to ask you. Both of you, uh, gentlemen, please. One second. I'm going to cut you off there because we are running out of time and we're coming close to questions. So what I'm not going to do is open up to questions. Um, I apologize for time. Put your hand down. Uh, <laughs> um, now, once again, I want to reiterate, we're keeping this civil. We don't have a huge amount of time, but I do want people to express questions. Opinions are fine, but we want questions more than anything right now. Um, and we have the entire panel, including Vaughn here, willing to ask questions. Keep it quick and keep it civil. Um, and I'm not saying that we got to expect bad behavior just because we don't have a lot of time, okay? Um, no, Jim. <laughs> oh, go ahead. That's your question. Uh, I don't understand how that's different than if I went out and registered Ian e Law, e Law sucks or Ian e Law porn.com. That's a different name. That's a different na what? domain name. It's a different domain name. I what own embalaw.com. You want to go out and buy EMBA Law Sucks for Mooseballs.com, you'll yeah. call. <laughs> but it's not but my domain name, my website, okay. my reputation. You're talking about having people going out and buying, and I'm done, using me. Right. EMBA Law dot triple X. What's I can going to do to monitor ICM pardon me, going to do to monitor what's on the on the site, mm -hmm. what's being it's used for. I can't go out and buy EMBA law EMBA law.gov. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. EMBA law.org waste up. This is going this is supposedly being used as a adult traffic site. What is they going to do to prevent everything unrelated to the adult industry from being dealt with on these sites. Well, I'm going to try and well, that one. well, I can answer it that in actual fact, and I think to, to your question, if you want to buy whatever your, your uh, domain I name is. No, no, hang on a second. <laughs> Give me the last word. So, um, if you want to buy it in a, uh, a .net or a .co.uk or whatever, you're free to do it. And, and for you to sort of sit there and, and think, well, you know, what rules and regulations are, are put in place to protect me here specifically, <laughs> honestly, just it means you're out of touch with the domain business for a kickoff. Uh, and secondly, if you want to buy a domain, you've got to self-attest that you're a member of the online adult entertainment industry. You know, that is a, a prereq to buying the domain name. How you, well, first, first of all, very, yeah. very, very polite insult. We'll give, give you that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what we call a, a Jewish compliment. I think this is all part of the discussion. Right. The pre-testing, the conversion, all these things are people are concerned about, whether it's in the mainstream or in the adult industry. And to basically say that you're going to have to pre-test is fine. What's the requirement for pre-testing? Okay. 
what we want when when she has a question I want to throw up more other people in the audience. Well, I just it, it's not a case of, of if you want to buy the domain, you know, the Sunrise program is put in place specifically for people that already own a trademark or already own a, a, TL, a, a domain in another TLD. If by the end of the Sunrise mechanism and process that you haven't actually got on board and done it, then you've missed your opportunity and you've got to go against, you know, run the risk of somebody else registering the domain. It's no different in dot triple X as it is in dot com, dot net, dot org, dot Co.uk, mm -hmm. .fr, whatever, you know? Um, Sasha, you were, I saw you first. If you're going to be subject to the same rules as everybody else, that's fine and good, and I'm happy with that. But, like, I'm looking at this from the standpoint of, in my particular industry, piracy is a huge, huge, huge thing as it is in the adult industry. Is ICANN or the .XXX TLD going to be able to combat that any bit, any better if we do offshore hosting? Okay, so first of all, the rules and, and regs that, that ICM are governed by in terms of the ICANN are exactly the same as they are for every other TLD. Right. And, and in fact, I think that the rules and regs for us are actually slightly tighter than they are for most other TLDs. In terms of your question about piracy, um, I think that's probably one of the biggest issues that the industry faces right now. Yeah, can you shut down a Puerto Rican on site? It's firing my shit. Oh, yeah, I could actually. Really? Yeah. Um, you have a question? Oh, yeah. But, but hang on. To, 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 that, to that point, um, I asked some industry guys and said, you know, there's been a lot of chatter back and forth about I4 and whether you should be on the board or not be on, you know, be involved with the policy council. And time and again, when I've asked people, if you could wave a magic wand and, and choose the first policy that I4 should make, what would it be? And pretty much. To a man, everybody says something to deal with anti-piracy. You know, and and it's killing us all. Exactly. So, so here's here's a good thing, that it, which is fine. Um, that if 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 the policy council says okay, we're going to have a three strike in your out room. So somebody who's got a dot triple X domain and they've got pirate you know pirated content on there, and you send them a cease and desist letter, and they, or you call them and ask them nicely. And the third time of asking, the uh, that they don't do anything about it, but yeah, we can absolutely turn the domain off. And to the point, and I think um, if anybody followed the thread on XBiz, the power of the people was a thread that was started by the guy from Groovy Books. About but the problem with it is, is they can go back and pick up another, another domain name five minutes later, and you should spec up to being pirated. But in, in .XXX, we can actually turn them down. We can actually expel them from the, uh, the domain. Are you okay? well, yeah, well, please, to this. I think what's important to, to when you're thinking about all this is, is asking where's the benefit. I just say everything you hear, ask where's the benefit. Now, if he's saying he can, uh, as a benefit, I can knock this guy's got your stuff on whatever dot triple X, and I can knock it down. That's a benefit. Definitely. The problem with that is that the where did you say the Philippines or where the, the, the guy over where overseas right where the guy overseas is pirating your your stuff. He he doesn't have to be on a dot triple X right. So even if you knock him off the dot triple X site, he's going to get a dot com, a dot you know dot whatever, and he's going to stick it up over there, and you're back to square one. You're being pirated. So it's not really a benefit in my my opinion, even if he could do that for you. And that's what I just caution everybody to think about: where's where's the benefit? And, and to your point, Connor, I think uh, you're quite right that if if we if we turn him off in the triple X, he can reappear somewhere else. That's not really. You know, my job to go on police.com.co.uk and, and the like. I think what it actually says is all it's a pointer towards some of the real benefits of a dot triple X when somebody's answerable. So if you make a call and say, hey, this is my content and it's been pirated, would you, using your rapid takedown, please take that site off, offline until it's sorted out? I think that's a really positive thing. We only have time for two more questions. Um, you guys are obnoxious, I don't like you. Um, no, go ahead. Uh, okay, I have a quick question. I'm Chris, I'm from 3.0. Um, my single question is, the recent ICANN decision to allow multiple TLDs, mm -hmm. um, does that diminish the value of .XXX? And how does it affect your business plan and, and, and what's, what's up? Okay, uh, does it dem diminish it? I think absolutely not. Because I think what it actually does, it raises... So the .sex or .porn doesn't diminish well, .XXX? No. No? Okay. No. Right. I, I think that the fact that the public could start to become more aware of domain names is a good thing all around. Do you think it, it, it diminishes, but overall does that, does having the, you know, the onus, it, the onus, having infinite, the, 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 onus the onus on ICM is going to be about 
delivering value to the community, right. okay? And it's a simple uh, game of sales. Sure. Okay, so if I add value to everybody in the room and come up with some great sure. ideas and send traffic and do this, that, and that, then you're going to say, this is good for my business sure. and I'm going to keep it. If it's going to make you money and bring you traffic, Correct. then it's good for you. Just buying a TLD, it, it, buying a TLD, <laughs> buying a TLD on its own doesn't actually Sure. Give, I mean, give a lot of value. Okay. So one of the things that, and we have got, I'm, it's a pity we're on such a short time sure. frame. I thought we were going to stay all day. Because yeah. one of the things, yeah, and, and I'm happy to stay by the way, I'm not running anywhere because it's a long way to the exit. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, so, um, but one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was, okay, so now we've got over the initial, you know, a version of trot, dot triple X and it's like it's here and it's here to stay, is how do we actually get on board and do something positive with it? Okay, so one of the things that we're going to be doing is launching a search engine specifically for dot triple x to send traffic back to webmasters who need a helping hand because you know things are difficult financially kind of like, kind of like pirated Google. content and, and the like you know it's let's get on to the positives as opposed to oh well it got you know it shouldn't be here so, the fact of it is it's here we're gonna have to deal with it one way or another you either choose to buy or not as the case may be so, and I would suggest that in 12 or 18 months time that some of the animosity that's been shown towards us as a company will evaporate and people will go, actually, okay. this has been very good for my business actually, and, um, and it's a very positive real quick, thing. Real quick. No, no. Actually, we, um, we, I've been told we actually can extend this for a bit of time. Yeah. Um, once again, I understand that you, you know, if you want to split this perfectly fine, but I also want to keep this going as long as possible. We're going to mix it up a little bit. We had a question over here, I believe. Yes, go ahead. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're under the impression that Dodd Triple X is to protect the children. So I like I have two questions. Okay. Number one, how does Dot Triple X protect children? And my second question, good question is ICM going to why would ICM even sell the domain Pepsi dot XXX? Well we we're, we're not. So so and a good question, Lloyd, and uh, so to, to that point, people like Pepsi, Pepsi dot triple X, Pepsi will have the chance to actually buy that name but block it and take it out of circulation. Yeah, but why would anybody be allowed to buy Pepsi.xxx? There's never going to be an adult but, site. Th so origi originally, um, back when dot coms were being sold, somebody, and it, it's probably happened numerous times, famous cases where they bought domain names and then pretty much held the, the brand owner to ransom to get the name back, okay? And so what we're doing, by doing this sort of orderly boarding process as it were is to say to people listen you've got an opportunity to buy the, your brand name and take it out of circulation if they don't do that and if somebody buys it there are still mechanisms in place that they can go through a, UDR pro, a UDRP process that's in place not just for triple X but for dot com and all these other things to actually get that name back and it costs about five thousand dollars so the choice is do you want to pay you sixty, seventy dollars and, and, and take care of it or run the risk of having to chase it through the courts. Now I know that might not sit very comfortably with some people, but unfortunately it's just how it is, whether it's triple X dot com doesn't doesn't really matter. To your other point about the child protection piece, um, every triple X domain it comes with a what they call a, a powder label, so it's equivalent of, of uh, an RTA label that's actually going to be in the domain name itself. And from a point of view, I think the responsibility when it comes down to accessing adult content, that responsibility lies in the home with the parents. And I would say, uh, Lloyd, that you know people have got on this bandwagon about child protection, and, and really. You know, I, I think that it's regrettable that, that that's you know become a, a sort of a focus for a lot of people, uh, and I think that uh, ultimately access to adult content really does reside at home with the parents. It's just triple X is a way, a means of actually. So this can be a built-in filter. No, no, no. It's 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 a, it's a label, and so what the browser. On, so when you're at home on on your desktop, you can say, "Do not let this computer access a dot triple X site." So it's at the, the responsibility is actually in the home, not at the ISP. Because the one thing you don't want is the ISP to say, we're going to block it verbatim. Which, and, and if in, in the UK, for example, uh, the British government are trying to, to bring a law in to say to all ISPs, you block adult content at source. So we're going to throw a blanket over everybody, and then it's up to you know, mom and dad to unsubscribe 
to allow the adult content in. And we're like, well, really, shouldn't it just be make it open and available, but make sure that people have got the tools to avoid it if they don't want to find it, and if they do want to find it, exactly. knock yourself out. Go yeah, but it. actually, I want to get this moving a little bit here. Um, Connor, you can go something to add to that? Quick response to this. A couple of things. The reason why child protection keeps coming up, by the way, is because m maybe you don't remember this, but I've been in this fight for many, many years, and child protection was what was used originally. That was one of the very first sales pitches of .XXX that ICM had used about how it was going to protect children. We shot a million holes in that, of course, because it wouldn't. So they, they, that's moved on. That's why it's not brought up as much anymore. Um, in terms of the whole issue of, of the sunrise period, and, and take why not, for instance. You know, I, I'm, I'm adamantly opposed to .XXX. I have no intention of buying a .XXX domain name. If somebody registers why not .XXX, I have to sue them. You know. So what's happening here is, is that I think what Bad Dog was saying was extremely important. It's like, why should anybody ever you know, register why not .xxx other than us? Why should anyone ever register Pepsi.xxx ever? Because it's never going to be a domain name. There could be a mechanism in place where these domain names are simply submitted without cost to us because they just shouldn't never be sold and they're just blocked and we don't have to worry about it. But instead we're given a choice of spending money, paying into the system, helping promote something really because that money can then be used to, to, to push a system that we're opposed with. It's either that or um, you've got to risk the lawyers and the $5,000 and all the other things. And I think everyone should think about that and say, hey, is that fair? And are the people who are running that going to treat me fairly if they're going to put me in this kind of a tough position when it's not necessary uh, to do so? Um, I do want to say moving really quickly, folks. We'll need to a little order. Um, the gentleman right there had a question. This, one of the gentlemen back here and then up here. So just to let you know. Uh, sir, you had a question? So there's a word. Like I heard, I don't know, I don't know if it's true, but there's a million WordPresses being made a day, and most of these people aren't professionals, and they're not companies, um, and their domains are their names, their personal names, and some of these people get amazing amount of traffic to their blogs, and some of these people are 16 year olds, and they're not, you know, they're not thinking I'm protecting my brand, they're not even thinking that they are a brand. But they really are, and they're making money. And if you're a 16 year old kid, how do you protect yourself from someone like, let's say your name's John Doe and you have johndoe.com? How do you protect yourself from going and capitalizing on that? Because you don't even know that top triple X is something that you even have to worry about. Does that make sense? Yep. I mean, from a non business perspective, how does a child or someone who has a blog who's not in it to make money? who's not doing this for business and who ha shouldn't even have to worry about a dot triple X, but then someone who sees, oh, this person has a lot of traffic coming to them, I could make a dot triple X and push a lot of, uh, what does that person do at that point? But what does John Doe do to protect themselves? Right. If they I don't have $300 <clears throat> to spend to take their name off that list. Well, I, I, I certainly understand the question, Mike, for sure. So. First of all, you've got to be 18 to buy a .XXX domain. You, if you want to use the .XXX domain, then you have to attest that you are a member of the online adult entertainment community. Okay, but what if you're a composter and you're 45 years old and you've never even thought about pornography and someone... And then you Honestly, I think... It, I understand the question, but I don't think it's such a huge issue. John Doe is sort of a bit of a... It's a common term that we use, or, you know, is used in America, okay? And, uh, and to be honest with you, if I was sat at home, would I go and buy Vaughan Miley dot triple X? Probably not. I don't think anybody would really want to look at too much pictures of me without my clothes on. But, <laughs> but if Vaughn Miley was a big domain dot com. If they're making money off it, it, if they're making money off it, then, you know, 60 bucks or whatever it is, 62, 65, 75, plus the bend over fee. But it's not. Twitter dot com is not making money and they're a big name. Yeah, I think tw uh, t Twitter, Twitter will probably want to buy Twitter.XXX. I'm pretty sure they will to protect their brand. And, and what they might want to do is because there's a lot of adult content going around that they might want to do an adult specific Twitter using, if, you know, if they thought about it the other way, how do I actually make this positive? And so anybody that wants adult related Twitter information goes to Twitter.XXX. Is, is it not? QED, the question that was asked has now been answered. Well, I, I'm not sure that it has. I, I'm not sure I've heard the answer with, with all due respect. If I'm Twitter, and this is a sponsored top-level domain, it's not a GTLD, 
The rollout of the new GTLDs, and there's a significant difference. Anyone can buy a GTLD. There's different, actually, types of new GLTs in the new regime. Should we go well, to the no, no, questions, no. Tom? Well, no, no, not but really here to listen to you. They want to ask some we questions. We actually have a... Yeah. Uh, 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 like, like uh, no, no, I, I understand that, but I still just, in a, with a sponsored TLD, and I really don't appreciate that comment, but let's just go right back. But it's that. But, 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 no, no, but, but hold on. I understand. No, let's but, tell but, them. Not educational but, TLDs. But he, okay, but, but he answered, uh, asked the legitimate legitimate question, and and, legitimate but, 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 it, but the, actually you didn't answer the question. Were you happy with the answer, Max? Should, why? No, we, not Max. I'm not he talking, asked the question. Were you happy with the Max. answer I gave you? I'm not talking about Max. I'm, I'm asking why Twitter should have to pay to protect its domain when Twitter.XXX cannot become a, a it's, you can't, it has to be a porn. You have to be a legitimate porn site. I, 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 I don't think we heard the answer to that. Well, let, me, let me ask Wanda to answer that really quickly, and then we're going to throw it back to the question. Was there a... Twitter will go and buy twitter.com, twitter.co.uk, twitter.de. They'll buy every domain name that they can possibly register Twitter with a suffix on it, whether it's a country code or whatever. They just will. Sponsored or not. Sponsored or not. Oh. Okay, we have a question from the back, gentlemen. Absolutely. The problem that I have that a lot of us have in the industry, and you don't think it's great, is the absence of a clear, concise process to validate who's in the industry and who isn't. You may not be ransoming, but what you're doing is tantamount to extorting from us to have to protect us from having to sue to protect our own identities. There, there is a clear. There. I understand the question, and, and, uh, and to try and answer that, is that there is a, a clearly defined process. So it comes back to the ordered boarding process. If you already own a domain name in another TLD and you want to buy the equivalent in .XXX, you actually get first refusal on it. That doesn't happen in any other TLD. So if we there, therefore refuse That's not been held to ransom, that's actually doing you a favor. If we refuse to buy into the triple X, that's fine. And pass it, then somebody goes in and swipes our intellectual property. And then and then that's, okay with that's, that's, that's how that's case. how it is with every other domain. Yeah. That and that's I think the point we've got to get to is that's how the world turns. But unlike other domains which aren't specific to our industry, exactly. you made the statement the triple X specifically caters to the adult industry, Correct. which there is no process in place to handle it beyond that initial phase. There is in terms of if you want to buy a domain, you yeah, have to say, I'm... You're extorting us at that point. Say again? You're extorting at that no, point. Not really, because dot coms were $100 yeah, dot back in the day. Yeah. 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 Let's, keep it, let's keep it so we'll be able to question these answers. It's not uncivil, by the way. I'm, I'm happy to take the question. Triple X can affect us. Dot net doesn't affect us. Unstuck. Now we have a question. I, I want to speak as a consumer myself and as response to both Connor and also Tom in this case. As uh, the question I have for you as far as when you say extorting, if you if you don't want to have a why not dot triple X, you have the option, of course, again, pay out the initial fee of sixty to hundred dollars or put up a legal challenge later um, to get that blocked out. Uh, let me ask you, uh, we all recognize that ICM registry is a for profit uh, entity. Uh, who do you have for a phone service uh, out in Texas? AT and T, what do you have out there? Yes, I'm asking, I'm just generous. Who do, you, who do you have for a phone service? Verizon, AT&T, okay, so yeah, Sprint. Uh, Fair enough. Do you want me to keep going? Well, that's fine. So you have Verizon, let's say, and, uh, and AT&T. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I have AT&T in my area, and what happens is I actually have to pay to not be listed, okay, in their directory, like in their yellow pages, or in this case, I'm sorry, their white pages. For me to keep information off their public database, I have to pay into that. So you're saying you, you think that the industry with all the, the, the way that it's run needs something like the phone company to start forcing us to pay money where we never had to pay before and that's okay because because the phone company did it on the on the direct I, I guess I don't follow the why that would why, why that would make it okay if the phone company told me I had to pay uh, money to not be listed and I didn't want to be listed first thing I'd want to do is switch phone companies to one that didn't do that uh, you I know. agree with you but if you look for a company that will actually not charge you the monthly or yearly fee to remain not listed good luck in finding that I've, I've come to accept that and even myself I have a brand like so you know, you've come to accept the fact that there are other entities that that, that force things upon you I'm a you I'm of the position that I'm of the position that I find that you know uh, 
I'm deplorable. I, I'm, I'm not okay with that. You know, I don't like that. So it's my natural uh, tendency as uh, an independent person and uh, who thinks independently and likes to run his own business and be in, in control of as, as many aspects of his own business as possible. I don't want to be uh, extorted. And my fear with Dot Triple X is that if I'm paying into it, you understand. So it's like you say, oh, well, it's only sixty bucks. First of all, there are lots of companies that own a ton of domain names, okay, and they're all branded. So you're not just paying sixty bucks. And not only that, I think the opting out is not sixty bucks either. Uh, it's a lot more than that to opt out of one. Uh, so you're talking about a lot of money over time. All that money can now be used uh, to, to promote this system that I don't that I don't want any part of in the first place. And then what makes it worse is the more powerful it gets from taking all of our more money and the more influential they get, the more things that they could do to compel me to have to spend even more money on a dot triple H domain name. So it creates this nasty cycle. So I guess, no, I'm not okay with saying, and by the way, I know that I just have to say to the crowd that um, ICM sponsored your, your pictures, you know, so right. they all know that you're not disinterested here. But that was my fault, by the way. I know, I know. So, you know I thought I, I saw I you actually, working that way. It was my idea. And so I don't think anybody should give Alec or his team a rough ride. <laughs> Seriously. I got the checks yeah. right here. <laughs> so, <laughs> Come on down. So, so, so just so you know, it was actually my fault, not his. So, so don't shoot the messenger. So shoot you instead, we'll just leave Alec alone. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, so, so I'm just saying, this is what you have to think. If you're going to buy into this and you're going to pay your if you're feeding the beast, so to okay. speak, and do you want to feed the beast? All right, no, I, one second, Bob. I mean, we have one second at the end there. Leaving aside my colleague's communist leanings, I'm talking about Connor, not Vaughn. That, that, that everything should be independent. The, the example just given by Alex runs contrary because the reason why you have to buy in or not have to buy in on your directory has nothing whatsoever to do with the phone company. It's state and federal law. Yeah. And the key in this country is when the laws say you have to do or don't have to do something, you do it or you don't have to do it, and if you don't like it is, you either take it up or you don't have it at all. I don't want to pay any more for private phone, but state law and federal law, telecommunications law, allows sure. for that. My point is there are no laws for this. So let me ask the magic question of playing the lawyer. Leaving aside who has or has not announced who, they, who is or is not going to block dot triple X, Every one of these people in here does business, at least the last time I looked, in the United States. Mm -hmm. The Department of Justice works in mysterious ways. <laughs> From personal and professional experience, what's the, stat what's the status of the Department of Justice comment on Dot Triple X, and what are you all going to do to prevent them from forcing either this industry into Dot Triple X or shutting off Dot Triple X to everybody as well in the United States? Shall I answer that one? Okay. Um, well, first of all, I think, and I'm not a lawyer, by the way, so what I tell you might not be 110% accurate. Uh, you're, you're obviously very well aware of uh, Bob Corn Revere, mm -hmm. and Bob being on the, uh, on the, everybody familiar with Bob Corn Revere? I was yeah. a member of the First Amendment Lawyers Association. Okay, and, and Bob also went to the Supreme Court and fought and won on behalf of Playboy. He was also instrumental in getting John Stalliano off his obscenity charges, and he's also our lawyer as well. So just in terms of the pedigree of the people that, that we have. Um, and I think that in terms of the Department of Justice or the Department of Commerce, they had to sign off on Don Triple X for it to go in the room in the first place. So that's one thing. Secondly, we will uh, fiercely oppose and defend any move by the US government to make it mandatory. And the reason that we've got somebody of Bob Cornervier's caliber on the, on the policy council, as well as retain his legal services, is to defend that right. So I think that, that the, um, the fact of the matter is it's, it's extremely unlikely to be mandated here in the US because you have the First Amendment. Somewhat different in my country of origin, if they pass the law, that's it, you're done. We don't have the First Amendment. So I suspect that you're actually in better shape here than you are in, uh, in the UK. And uh, I know we've got a couple of guys over from Germany as well. We're currently talking to the Jugendschutz. So if, uh, if you want to know about onerous legislation and restrictions, if an 18-year-old German wants to go and serve uh, for adult content, he's got to go to the post office and reg register and prove that he is 18 years old and get a token <coughs> and take it home. So, um, 
I've got a question as well. Can I ask a question? Certainly. And it comes back to pricing. Um, and, and to you specifically, Connor, I think, how much is it to attend Why Not as a, as a, a delegate and attendee? you want the answer to that? Yeah. <coughs> uh, that would be anywhere from, if it's included in your sponsorship or a deal, nothing. If you're uh, early bird registration, uh, $99. Uh, if you registered in advance on the web, uh, what was it, one sixty-nine something like that. So you know where I'm going with this question. <laughs> that, so why can't it be $40? Why can't it be for it? Okay. Yeah. But, okay. The, when you, this is a really, I'm happy to answer question. Yeah. So when you run a summit, you have um, certain direct expenses in terms of the, um, of the hotel, et cetera. Yeah. So you are all here because you want to be here. Now, how would, it, how would you like it if, um, if it was like, okay, you can pay $149 to come to the summit, or it's going to be $50 if you don't want to come to the summit, right? <laughs> we don't do that to you. Right? You know, and so either got to go for 149 or 50, you can't go. So that's, that's why I don't think it's really And, and I, I, uh, I agree with you, and in the same way that you don't have to come to Triple X either. You know, and, and running a summit, you know, running a registry is a fairly intensive, expensive business, you know, and I think that. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot more to it than just meets the eye. There really is. But you know, just to say to that, but shouldn't the people who want to be a part of it be the ones who are paying for it, right? Rather than the people who don't want to be a part of it. And that's no, that's, that's my point. I understand it's expensive, mm -hmm. and if people want to buy into it, they ought to pay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I do want to sort of like wind it up a little bit, kind of because because I think we're getting a little you know yes. tired and energy going out there. But I still have a couple more questions. So one second, sir. Uh, in the back, right there. Hi, um, I'm kind of curious. Have you guys talked to like search engines, Google, Bing? Um, because I don't know. Because like, I mean, one concern is, especially with Google. I mean, even with them, when they launch their instant search, you won't get like porn or any type of like latest search. They don't show that up. And I think it'd be really easy for them. And my background is used to be from SEO. Like we've done studies that look at .com, .org, .net, and they tend to favor certain ones. So I think. I don't know, Google, they wanted to be like, okay, if you want to do adult search, it's not even an index and there are main index, which I don't know if you guys talk to them to actually but, see how they yeah, do Yes, we, we have talked to, uh, to all of the above. And uh, we didn't get round to it, but we are going to be announcing the launch of our own search engine, search.xxx. Yeah. Okay. And did they say they would index? Well, that answers that. Yeah, so it sounds like they're, they're not going to. Uh, no, they didn't say they're not, but we just think that it's prudent to have independence. Okay, I want to have one more question, and then what we're going to do is one is willing to stay here and answer any question you have. So formally, we're going to wrap this up up to the next question. Um, so give me one second. Um, in the middle, right there. Yes. Yeah. So, if I'm, am I understanding that it costs more to opt out if you don't want your? Is that how much is it if I don't want my site on there? No, if, if you want to block it, if you want to, yeah. to opt out, effectively block uh, a domain name and yeah. not have it used. Or buy the domain name but not have it resolve. Yeah. Uh, the, the, price, the, the exact price is going to be set by uh, the registrars, but I think it's like two fifty, three hundred dollars. So my question is, I have thirty-five domains. I'm yep. a little thing. I'm not big like everybody else, and I don't want my stuff on there. How come it costs more for it not to exist? Well, it's it's a case of a function of, of making the domain non-resolving, and and we have to do the, the various checks. In terms of do you already own that domain, there is a, there is actually a, a sum cost to uh, to ICM to go and do the back you know to prove that you because what we don't want is people blocking your domain name how who is, might be a competitor. So how is that different? I mean, what checks do you go through? To uh, make if I was you, contact? I'd register it and use it because if I'm going to send you some free traffic, you may as well have it as a as a freebie than not. It takes ten know. seconds to check it seriously. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, this is what I wanted to say. I just want to make a quick announcement here. Uh, while we have two truths and a lie scheduled to start at three, at three o'clock. Is that what time it is right now? Three o'clock. No, it's two. Two o'clock. Uh, we're going to run there at two o'clock, and then after that, state of the industry. Um, Monica has been uh, uh, so nice enough to say, you know, we could actually forego two truths and a lie, yeah. and instead keep this panel going. Uh, with the question and answer and everything, and we can run this for probably another hour if you wanted to. Uh, we have that I'm much time. With it. I'm down with yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to sit here, uh, you know, and then uh, when that is over, we'll take a break and then we'll do the state of the industry panel. But as well, what I wanted to do, because Monica, uh, because she's been so generous from Stockroom with all the prizes and everything, 
Uh, we have a raffle drawing that we want to have in the lower lobby level area. Uh, probably right after this session would be best, but after this session and before State of the Industry, so that uh, she can give away some prizes to people. So I urge everyone that once you're done here, go out to the lower lobby, uh, support Monica, let's do our drawing, and then we can break and then come back in here for State of the Industry. But uh, just to let you know, we're going to cancel two truths and a lie to keep this going. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> What are we doing? We're going to say we're going to answer, we'll answer questions. Uh, oh. Mom's willing to answer them. I'm going to moderate for a little, a little bit longer, so we can love a child. Be active of, of the police chief. Let's give people a chance to filter out first. I want to have a stopping over while we're trying to talk. Ultimately, if we can actually educate the consumer, and I'm talking people outside of the industry, to surf and search for adult content on a .XXX domain, and that they are, you know, confident and happy to come and, and, and surf and consume and buy, pay, which is the most important piece. Having a look and doing what you've got to do in the first three minutes for nothing doesn't get anybody very far anyway. We, we have got to deliver value, otherwise in 12 months' time when it comes around to renewal, people won't go with it. So our entire sort of uh, approach from a business perspective, return on investment, is that we have got to send you at least... $60 worth of value, and, I, and to, to my mind, that's traffic for it to even be worthwhile. I think some of the upsell on that is the, uh, is the PR that we're going to generate globally, educating consumers that it's a great place to come and find adult uh, content and entertainment. And I think that um, $60 or whatever it turns out to be, 75 depending on who your registrar is, I, I think that ultimately it's not a very uh, huge price to pay as long as, coming back to Connor's point, if the value is there and the benefit's there, then people will be cool with it. If, so, if it's not, they won't renew. So ICM is actually going to spend money to do PR and try to get well, acceptance in the community and the consumer space? I, I think um, in terms of acceptance in the community, uh, we're trying hard as we can. Um, I'm not sure how successful we're being, but we'll uh -huh. keep trying. And we're trying to win a few hearts and minds. Are we spending money? Absolutely. So something that you'll see this week is that we've just announced an $8 million deal with McAfee. And so when you buy a domain name, you're going to get McAfee free of charge, malware and virus scanning. And uh, statistically, McAfee say that you see on average an uptick of 12 to 14% additional spend on a site that is uh, malware and virus checked from a consumer perspective, when it's got the green check mark to say that you know this has been scanned, they see an uptick in that. So we've spent $8 million doing that deal. That's going to be thrown in with every domain name. Uh, we actually bought McAfee on uh, Wednesday or Thursday for our new site. And as a standalone transaction, we did it you know, to find out exactly how much it cost. It was $360. So when you buy a triple X domain, you get benefits? I mean, of course like you do. We just don't like to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Question, Bill? So it means I have to re respond with this. In addition to, he's saying $60 worth of traffic and whatnot, you also have to weigh, if you're running businesses, we're pros and cons here, you also have to weigh the fact that there are liabilities that you're taking on, and I discuss this, what I believe at least, and if you agree with me, um, though, that those liabilities exist when you buy into this domain and you start putting, pumping money into it, et cetera. So I don't think it's a matter of just getting $60 back. I think, you know, it's a, it's a lot larger than that. You have, you have to be able to be saying, I'm getting so much benefit from these things that it outweighs the potential problems and liabilities that also exist. Now, I'm not saying these things will happen or the bad things will happen, but they could happen and they're very plausible. And, and you're not under that problem with just the, the, the dot coms that you're on now. These are this a whole new set of, of possible nightmare scenarios. So am I getting enough benefit back to outweigh all of these potential liabilities and problems? And I think that's what you need to consider, not just $60 back. I, um, I thought we'd sort of got over the skepticism and we'd put the boogeyman back in the cupboard, but um, clearly not. Um, but give it a shot. What have you got to lose? Sixty dollars, right? And if if it turns out to be a good thing, my and my stated objective before we got in here, and I did have a word with LAJ before we started, is that I I look forward to the day when he's uh, he's a convert and actually likes Triple X. And if I can get to that point, I've done my job. <laughs>
we are kind of winding a little bit here. I believe we're going to retire. This gentleman's been waiting. Actually, well, one quick comment from the, from the end, then we'll go to the gentleman in the back. You don't mind, Richard, do you? Take your time. Thanks. <laughs> Careful. Yes. <laughs> Forget the boogeyman scenarios. I don't need to create a boogeyman scenario to actually create one. What have you done to speak to, every, to the National Conference of State Legislators, the United States Conference of Mayors, and the members of Congress to ensure that happy little state legislators aren't going to ban it, that mayors aren't going to come out against it, and that the United States Congress, which has its own happiness, as you all know, isn't going to prevent it from happening. And these are not boogeyman scenarios. I don't, the adult industry, not just this one, but every aspect of the adult industry deals with opportunities of legislation on a daily basis to either ban, restrict, or limit their existence. This is going, this, you're going, you're putting the industry front and center to allow these people to basically say, we aren't going to allow this to happen. You come here, we won't allow it to occur, which they can't do, forgetting Connor's movie man scenario, which they have been terribly unsuccessful in doing in dot com. And while I appreciate that Robert's going to make a fortune on your behalf, what are you all going to do about it? Was that a question to me? Yeah. <laughs> Questions to you. I um Personally, I don't have any conversations with anybody in government, whether it be local or at a national level. I get involved in coming talking to people in the adult industry. You, um, you may not be, but what, are you, what is your company doing? You indicated that things yeah. are much more different and much easier here because we have the First Amendment. Correct. Which means you haven't a clue what the First Amendment means. I'm not a lawyer, but I, know, I, didn't, I, prof I, didn't, I didn't profess to be one. Uh, an indirect answer to your question, uh, other people are doing the meetings and conversations, whether it be here or in other parts of, of the world. But I think that if, as an industry, you think you're hiding in .com, you're not, and that, that you're easily found, whether you're in .com, .co.uk, .de, wherever it is, the root zone file is... Uh, is available and I think that maybe, just maybe, is there not a case to be said, here's an opportunity for the industry to come together and have a united voice and go and talk to the people that make the, uh, the laws and say, look, we, we have, we've got our own house in order, we don't need you to be overseeing what we're doing. And, and I think that's actually far better to do that than it is this the fragmented conversation and, and I think that there may be um, you know, an argument, and Conor and I talked about this with, uh, with Stuart Lawley when we had a, a conference call, is to say, could, could there be a, a scenario where Triple X is viewed as a safe harbour, as opposed to, you're going to get shut down? True. Yeah, I did can I, can I, yep. can I if, let's say there was such a provision in place where the, the, the United States government was to say, look, if you're on a dot triple X domain name, we're not going to hit you for obscenity. Okay, you don't have to worry about that anymore. That would be the huge benefit. Let's, let, I mean, let's not, we, there's no other way to say it. That would be enormous. However, the problem is there is not such uh, a safe harbor right now. We don't know if there will be. And in fact, um, I pers I'm not a lawyer, but I think that it's kind of unlikely that the US government would ever, they like to be able to mess with people when they want to mess with people. And to give that up, um, I'm not sure why they would do that. So the problem is we're now faced with, and this is what I'm saying before, we have to spend money into the into the beast, so to speak. Uh, that's an expression, by the way, I'm not trying to. Uh, <laughs> or we have to, um, you know, or we have to risk all this. There's no way to wait and see. If I, if three years down the line, I see him registry delivered a safe harbor from obscenity, um, then you would have to say at that particular point, wow, that is a really big benefit, and that might be worthwhile. Right. But we are not going to know that, and I think it's very, very, very unlikely. That's the problem. But, and I, th I think um, I, you, there is no, I can't tell you today what's going to happen. You know, How can I possibly say that that's the case? One of the things that, that we had discussed, um, Connor, when we were on our call, was maybe bundling something like a, a half a million dollars or a million dollars of uh, of insurance cover 
uh, for obscenity uh, legal fees or, or legal fees to cover any charges that were brought against a triple X domain owner for obscenity. And that's something that we're taking very, very seriously. It was a great suggestion, and I know you uh, thought that that was a good value to, to, to sort of throw in the mix. Why not? We're not here to shut down the industry. We're not here to, to hurt the industry. We actually want to positively, you know, impact in a, in a positive way and bring some, some real value. And as I say, it, it's going to be one of those scenarios where uh, talk is cheap, it's, it's about what we actually do. And if we start delivering true value, so if we have a win, for example, against that VOD, or we make a challenge to, to change the uh, challenge the 2257 and, and the like, then maybe people will start to uh, to believe that you know our intentions are not um, you know negative; that they're actually very positive intentions. And all I can do is, is say to you, is always keep saying to people, give me a chance to prove it. You know. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the Free Speech Coalition has been working for years on behalf of this industry, doing just that, and. Um, uh, in a free environment, not a closed, uh, um, regulated environment. Um, I, I would say that that safe harbor. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I would say that um, that safe harbor can easily become a ghetto. Um, so, quick, quick question then. So, and, and I know that a lot of people. And this is a bit of a hot potato in terms of membership of the Free Speech Coalition. Um, but how did you get on with 2257, Tom? Uh, 2257 is ongoing, as yeah. you well know. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think if, uh, if we get to the point where we do something positive with it... And, you, know, uh, you know, look... It's, it's wait to see you've had your chance and you didn't do very well with it, so give us a go, you know? Okay, um, I, I do want to wind this up because I think we're getting a little you know, tired of the president. Since Juan has been willing to answer other questions. Richard had a question. Let's, let's prospect him. Richard? Um, one of the things that we addressed earlier, uh, well, actually, before I begin, Bond, thank you very much for, for coming and talking to us here. One of the things that we addressed earlier was India saying that they would not allow, that they would be blocking the, the triple X TLD. What about businesses, governments, and educational facilities such as colleges? I get about 20 to 30 percent of my traffic to my various blog networks from these organizations. It, I could not go to a triple X TLD because all of that would be blocked. Do, don't you believe that every government, and every business, and every educational institution in the United States and other countries will instantly block the West? No. Now, you'd expect me to say that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, so India haven't blocked Dr. Plex at all. It's not been been blocked. Do it. It, it does exist, Tom, because if you go to www.about.xxx, you'll see that it's resolving and it's in the root zone file. So, um, and that will then take you to our home page. Are people going to block and filter it? Absolutely. Do people block and filter today? Absolutely. There was a uh, very interesting article that I read. We should dig it out and have a look at it. The most filtered and blocked websites in the world are actually social media sites. They're not adult at all. So companies are proactively blocking things like Facebook because they don't want employees at 10, 12, 15, 20 dollars an hour, you know, posting pictures of their uh, their weekend trip to San Francisco. They actually want them doing the job that they're paid to be done. So, All right, I, I would like to at that point formally end this. Uh, however, Vaughn is willing to send, to be here and ask her, answer questions you may have, which I think is very good of him. Um, I would like to first thank you all for being here and for being civil and being respectful. I think that you all deserve a round of applause, especially for people on the panel. I'd like to say Vaughn is willing to answer questions. Um, I hope you treat me with respect and everything else. And I want to thank the panel again for being a lively but also informative and educated panel. So thank you all once again. And, and Vaughn did come a long way, uh, so if you have any questions, this is a really good opportunity to speak with them. So um, now's the time to come up and, and anything you want to ask about Dr. Plex, you're not going to hear it from um, a, a more, um, uh, there's only one other guy at ICM uh, higher than Vaughn, so come up and ask your questions, please. And can, can I just say thanks to Connor and the guys at Why Not for allowing us the opportunity, thanks to the other panel members and also the lady from Stockroom for uh, 